going to take you through strategy number four of the promotion playbook. The promotion playbook consists of a story that includes seven strategies. And then at the end of the seven strategies, there's four skills for you to master for your assessment center success. So strategy number four gets into making your plan. And it talks about how to have a plan uh, to structure your training plan so that you can be best prepared for your test. Now it starts off um, just with this picture and then it says in order to stay the course, you must commit to doing the work. Uh, the story in the story is the, the story of firefighter Jake who is uh, takes his journey on his path to promotion and meets his mentor who guides him and teaches him throughout the story. So there's a story layout of these it's presented in. And strategy number four, it starts with this quote, which says, um, if I know if I know I make this much trouble, I never climb Everest. And that's from Tenzing Norgay, who was uh, one of two individuals to first reach the summit of Mount Everest. And there's a metaphor that I'll explain why that's relevant towards the metaphor that's used throughout this chapter. Um, in the story, so throughout the story format is that Jake, who's the firefighter, he goes to fire school for the weekend and he's teamed up based on strategy number two of, of proximity is that he's made a kind of a battle buddy or a, a training partner that, that he's teamed up with in his preparation. And they're in, they spend all day in class. And after class, most people at fire school are going out to party and to drink and to um, kind of have a night out on the town. And they decide to instead, they schedule this call with their mentor and they're gonna, they're gonna um, schedule and they're gonna do their homework and prepare for the test. And so it leads to this quote, where this is just from Mike, the other character in the book, who's, who's uh, the training partner with Jake. And he says, hey, I'll party when I promote. So instead of going out and just kind of going with the flow, they have a plan and they're sticking to their plan by doing that. And so on the call, it's introduced that, that there's seven strategies which are introduced. We're covering number four right now. And then the four skills, which is introduced in the previous chapter. So real quick, the four skills, which are part of the game day toolkit. If you're following through the book, you should have you should have completed this exercise on the last one, which is this is from strategy number three of defining the prize is you want to be clear on what your target is. So this is um, an assessment based on the four skills. The four skills are study, speak, write and apply. So if you have um, at this stage in the book, you should have a general idea of what you need to do to get prepared for the test. And that's what this represents is these are all the things that you have to do to prepare. So they do a, a video call during this video call, their mentor talks to him and says there's seven strategies, there's four skills. And then the other piece of it is this story is getting the right mindset and the right stories that are going to drive your success. And um, basically it's uh, this plan is based off of a 90 day training plan, which 90 days is a quarter of a year. It's three months, it's 12 weeks, 90 days. Um, or 2,160 hours. It's common for most people when they go for an assessment, one of the things that can take people out is they say that they don't have the time. They say, well, I'd like to promote or I'd like to give it a full effort, but I'm just so busy with family life, with work, with other responsibilities, uh, I don't have time for it. This kind of helps you to break it down and make sure that you make your preparation a priority. So it's based on 90, it's recommended to use 90 days and then you can build your plan based on that. That being said, if you don't have 90 days, um, you can still apply this strategy, but it's recommended that you at least have 90 days. It, it's a good trajectory to have. Introduces this concept called time chopping. So it's basically, um, instead, there's the metaphor that if you're gonna eat an elephant, you have to do it one bite at a time. This one just says, hey, if you're gonna chop down a giant tree, you just take one swing at a time, is don't focus so much on the size of, of the tree that you have to chop, just start swinging and adjust as you go. What you don't wanna do is you don't wanna overanalyze things and just get stuck in analysis paralysis is you make a plan and then it's, the plan should seem overwhelming at first, but then you break it down into daily actions. And each day, if you just do a little bit of focus each day, it can get you best prepared. And so this is basically how it is. This concept of time chopping is that you have 90 days, you break it into 30 day benchmarks, and then you have a weekly check-in and all this just comes down to every single day, you just do a little bit of work. The main key here is consistency. Like don't show up on shift and train all day 
and then blow off the rest of the week. You'll get much farther by just doing small amounts every single day than if, if you just try to cram it all into one weekend or one day or a week before the exam, it's gonna be a lot more difficult. So this is the 90 day training plan and there's a tool at the end of it, which I'll explain. Um, so the 90 day training plan is basically you, um, it consists of, again, 90 days, 30 day benchmarks, weekly check-in and then daily work. So here is the, the mountain metaphor and we use Mount Everest, the quote was mentioned before. So say if you're gonna climb Mount Everest is that nobody goes and climbs Mount Everest in a day. They have four camps and you go up to one camp and you get used to the altitude and you make your adjustments and then you go up to the next camp and then you, you, you take it in um, these smaller steps. And so you don't climb Mount Everest in one day, you do it um, several days and it's planned out over the course of time. So that's what this, this image represents is that this little hiker down here would be you starting out for your uh, promotional test. And then up here is the target, the specific goal that you want to achieve and you make it as measurable as possible. So it's one thing to say you want to be successful at the test. It's another thing to say um, to have a specific measurable thing for what you want, what you need to study, um, how you're going to develop your speaking skills, how you're going to de develop your writing skills, and then what type of uh, practical application skills you have to develop. So the 90 day target, um, the overall, the overarching target is, is to have a successful test, but that gets broken down into these four areas so that it's measurable. And by the time you hit this 90 days, you want to complete the majority of your work so that you're the best prepared. And um, 90 days, you want to have a 30 day check in, a 30 day benchmark, 60 day benchmark, and then a 90 day target. And then each week, there's a check in to make sure that you're doing the work each week. And then it all comes down to this daily discipline. Uh, they, they go through this for a while. It's basically the recommended amount is that if you can commit 20 hours per week, it should be, it's kind of like doing a part-time job to get prepared for this. So if you could commit 20 hours per week, then over 12 weeks, 20 hours, that's 240 hours. If you think about taking on medic school or going through um, a college class or something like that, you should take your, uh, your preparation that seriously to commit at least this amount of time. You can do more if you want, but this is a good, a, a good plan to follow here. And the way you do that, so if you wanna get 240 hours of preparation over a course of 12 weeks, then um, that's basically four hours per day, five days a week, and it's 20 hours per week. So I recommend if you can set aside four hours per day, do that five days a week, that's gonna be a good amount of time that's committed to developing these four skills for your assessment. It is uh, loosely based on this concept called the 10,000 hour rule, which is in a book called Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. And in that he says he studied these people that seem to have like, they're like the outliers, they're the best of the best in the industry, whether it's music or sports or um, business, is you look at the people who are the best at what they do, and he says it typically takes them 10,000 hours to get to that level, 10,000 hours, over the course of 10 years, and you can reach this level of mastery. And if you break that down into daily, that's basically just four hours per day, five days a week, 20 hours per week, and over 10 years, that would give you 10,000 hours. Um, for this, it's only the course of 90 days, but if you apply this and you put this much work into it, you're likely gonna be better prepared than the majority of your competition. And the key here is consistency. Consistency is more important than just trying to cram it in at the last minute. Uh, so it talks about it. And then just dividing out your skills is that uh, you measure your time and then you divide that among the skills that you're going to focus on. So it's a common mistake that people get so caught up on one piece of the test. Say you're testing for a company officer position and you spend all your available time working on uh, doing size ups or incident management, but you neglect your oral board skills, you neglect to study for the written test, and that's going to show up on the test. So make sure that you allocate your time to develop those four skills. Four skills again, study, speak, write, and apply. So 30 day benchmarks, weekly check-ins, daily work. And then the, the toolbox is um, again mentioned, it was introduced in the first chapter, but the toolbox is the, the toolkit is the, um, the second part of this book, or it's actually the third section of the promotion playbook. The first introduces the story, 
The second goes into depth on these seven strategies, which we're in that part now. And then the third piece of this book is those practical skills that are likely going to help you in the assessment center. And so at the, the last part of the promotion playbook is all sorts of size up forms. Um, there's oral board do uh, documents to help you prepare. There's something to help you with the written test. And there's stuff to help with role play and other things like that. Again, a lot of it's going to be unique to your individual test, but those are still there to help guide you and get prepared. So here's the email from Jake's mentor, and he lines it out. Here's the 90-day training plan is based on what's the main target, and then you measure it based on time and repetition. So how much time will you commit to developing this skill? And then another piece is how many reps are you going to get? So let's say for oral boards, um, how, many oral, how many mock oral boards will you do every week? Or in 30 days, how many oral boards will you do? So I'll get down into where the visual helps. And you have your benchmarks, weekly check-ins, daily work. And this is what the, the tool looks like, is here is the main target here. So under this is like the master, this is like the 90-day win. So the target here is, say, to test number one in the assessment center. And then under the four skills, this gets into the metrics of how you measure it. So let's say you want to do, say, 20 mock oral boards. Say you want to write uh, 10, 10 to 20 essays. You want to do 50 size ups, uh, 20 role play scenarios. You want to write out um, a story every week or a story every day. You want to do, um, you want to read through the required textbook three times. You want to do a study guide, whatever it is, this is yours to make up. So this is just a guideline um, for you to fill out is you can start to, to add all the work that you want to do by the top of that 90 days. So you think about, this 90-day training plan, this first this first page, is designed to represent the top of the mountain. So that page represents what your 90-day target is. So if you can almost get that and put it up on top of there, and it says, yes, you want to be successful, but in order to climb it, here's all the work that I've got to do to get there. So that's the peak. That's the summit. This represents the mountain that you want to climb in terms of preparation. From there, you set your benchmarks, and for this, I recommend that you set a date just so it's on your calendar and you're aware that um, that's the next place you got to get to. And if you wanted to, you could add the amount of work in, uh, that's part of that. Uh, in order to keep it simple, though, all I recommend doing is that you schedule a date, you commit a date, and you put that date in your calendar so that you know by this first 30-day benchmark, which is the number one date, you should have about a third of this complete. And then by the second one, you should have two-thirds of it complete. And then uh, by the third date, that would be the 90-day benchmark, you should have the majority of your plan done, if not all of it completely done so that you know you're prepared. The daily work, and then so this is just you put it in writing that you commit to the following time. You don't have to do four hours per day, five days a week. You could do three hours per day for six days a week or however you want to do it. If all you have is one hour per day and you're going to do it six days a week, that's better than... Um, not committing to anything. So remember, the um, the it's really important to to stick to this what you write down. And then here's the weekly check-in. So on a weekly check-in, is I recommend that you do the four skills assessment, which was the tool introduced in the first chapter. And then based on that assessment, see what areas you need to adapt. So the assessment just evaluates as a self-evaluation. Well, actually, ideally, if you're working with a coach or someone else is that you would have them grade you, and then you could have a discussion on how strong you are in each of those areas. Again, study, speak, write, and apply are the four skills you're looking to develop. And then 30-day benchmark is, um, what is the next benchmark that you wanna hit and how far away are you? The weekly review is that you go over your training plan, you go over your schedule. And so this is your training plan, you go over this, you go over your schedule, and then finally, the daily work. So you just check in. Each week, I recommend that you set at least an hour. And this is kind of your check-in time to make sure that you're staying on course with your plan. It's also a good time to make any anything that you need to adapt or change based on this evaluation. Now, at the end of this chapter, there's one extra evaluation that I, I give in the book that could also be another thing that evaluates how well you're applying these seven strategies towards your assessment. And then this is a, a, a I recommend doing this each month is just like a checkoff. This is what a, this is a recommended work week is that you do four hours a day, Monday through Friday. 
on Saturday, you do your weekly check-in. So you spend at least an hour going through and just evaluating your plan and doing the check-in and setting up the week going forward. And then on Sunday, I recommend you have a day of rest or Saturday, whatever day works. I believe it's helpful to have a day of rest of not focusing on it so you can clear yourself out. You can stay. It's a, it's a chance to rest and renew yourself and then you go back into it. But this is totally up to you. This is suggested schedule. Here's the example that Jake did here is that this is his example. He wants at the time in the book, he's testing for the engineer test. There's the date he wants to do number one and his target is to complete at least 240 hours of training, 20 hours per week. So here it is. This is all the stuff that he wants to complete by then. Here's his benchmarks. And he just used it by um, by hours. Is that he, he said, how many use this? Uh, my, my hours I'm gonna complete every 30 days. He's using time as his metric. And he completes four hours per day, five days per week. And then this is what his training plan looks like. So he puts an X over the days when he completed the work. So in April, he did he missed it on Monday, but he got the work done on Tuesday, Wednesday, missed it on Thursday, but got it done Friday, Saturday. Then on uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, he consistently did it, but then he took a vacation. And then near the end, he starts stringing them together. So the goal here is that each month, ideally you string as many of these X's together as possible. And you just keep this in your folder with, with your training plan so that each day you do the work, you cross it off. If you are uh, going leading up to a test and you only have a couple of days that you're applying and, and uh, training, that's a, that's a good reflection that you need to adapt and to give more time. So this is a pretty good looking schedule here. There's going to be days that you miss, but at least you're tracking it and at least you're checking in each week and you cross it off whether or not you did the work. So the daily work again would be that um, he did his four hours of focus on his training. So he measures this. If he does the four hours for the day, he gets the X. If he doesn't get the four hours or doesn't train at all, then it's just an open day that he did not train. And so this ultimately will lead to a good outcome. And that's it. So um, the next chapter is he goes into finding your purpose and really understanding your why behind your test and why it's so important for you to be successful at this test. So thanks for watching and uh, look forward to the next uh, next next video uh, and have a great have a great week.